welcome back to another episode of Last Minute Laura. As you may be able to notice, I am wearing the same thing as I was in the last couple of videos, and that's because I'm filming a whole slew of how to dye fabric naturally at home all on the same day. So yes, I'm wearing the same thing. It's because it's the same day as the last video. It's just they're coming out in succession because each video is a different type of pigment. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use blackberries to get a super pretty purple color dye. And this dye is really color fast. I've washed this twice, I've ironed it, and it's still really purple. As you can see from the unbleached cotton that I used, it gives you a pretty good color payoff, I would say. And you only need about a cup of blackberries. You could do half a cup of blackberries, half a cup of blueberries. That'll give you a little bit more of a bluey gray, a bluey purple, pardon me. Um, but not really blue. Blueberries still give a purple. Just a little bit of a different purple. So for this recipe, you're going to need about a cup of blackberries. You're going to need something to dye. Preferably it would be a natural fiber. It doesn't really hold well on plastic based fibers. So cotton, linen, wool, um, I think rayon, right? Rayon is natural. Things like that. If you've got a mixed fiber, like something like cotton and wool were mixed together, you might get a little bit of a different color payoff on each fiber, so just be aware of that. Um, but yeah, let's get started. Like I said, you will need the blackberries, you'll need some fabric, you'll need a pot, a big pot to simmer the blackberries in to extract all of that pigment. You're going to need a big container as well, something that you can fill your dye in and then place your fabric that you want to dye in. That's just gonna allow you to leave it somewhere out of the way for four or five hours just to, for your fabric to um, accept as much of that pigment as possible. So, once you've got your blackberries or blueberries, blackberries in this case, all prepared, ready in your pot, meet me over at the stove and I will show you what to do next. All right, so now that we are at the stove, I'm going to just take my cup or so of blackberries and put them into my pot. And then I'm just going to add a whole bunch of water and we're gonna bring these berries up to a boil and once they hit a boil, I'm going to put them down to a simmer for about an hour until all of the pigment is extracted from those berries and then we'll be able to use it like a dye. So I'll let you know where we are in about an hour's time and we'll see what we can do next. Okay, so it's been about an hour that our blackberries have been simmering and what we're gonna do next is filter the blackberries out of that juice that they've been simmering in. So I'm just going to take a strainer over top of a bowl and I'm gonna pour the mixture in. It's not gonna get every single piece strained out, but it's gonna get the most large and yucky ones out of the way. Just gonna do like that. And then this is the blackberry dye. So what I'm gonna do next is take a pre-soaked swatch. You can put whatever you're gonna dye if you're doing a t-shirt or something. Still good to pre-soak it. It just makes it hold on to the dye better. And I'm gonna put that into a glass container. I'm also going to do some unbleached muslin and a little bit of this little trim that I have just because it uh, it's super white. I thought it would work great for a swatch. So I'm gonna put those in and then I'm gonna pour over that blackberry dye juice. And you can see how dark it is, it's so pretty. Okay, and then I'm just gonna let that sit on the counter until it's cooled all the way down, probably about four hours, and that should get a really nice color to it. So I will come back in four hours and I will show you what we've got. Okay. Here we go. This is one I am very excited to have a look at. This is the blackberry dye, which has been sitting now for, I'm gonna say almost 12 hours, probably. Oh God, more than 12 hours by now, I didn't look at the time. So I left it last night because the sun was gone and I didn't want to film an outro in the dark with fake lighting because everything else was done with natural light, so I just waited till the next day. Now that we are here, first step, put on some glovies because you don't wanna stain your skin with that blackberry juice. 
You're also going to need a big bowl of cold water or you could fill up your sink or tub. You'll also need about a teaspoon of sensitive uh, cold water, unscented, no dye um, laundry detergent. That's gonna be the most gentle on our fabric. And then what I'm gonna do, since this is in a really tall container, I'm just gonna pour it into here so I have easier access to my fabrics. Oh my goodness, look at how dark it is! It's so pretty. Okay, so first things first, give it a good squeeze to get all of the excess liquid out. And then we're gonna give it a really good rinse, an aggressive rinse. You really wanna get all of the excess pigment out and you want to get all of the little pieces of blackberry that made it through our sieve and into our dye batch. You want to get those out because they won't cause a problem now, but they are plant matter. So if you were to leave this out, you could have the problem of mold or rot or attracting insects or, I don't know, bleeding out dye onto your skin. So none of those things are good. So first things first, give it a really good rinse with detergent and cold water. And once you feel that you've gotten almost all or all of the extra pigment out, you can squeeze out the extra water and then you can lay out your item on a dry towel and let it dry for several hours. And that is going to lock in what's left to be locked in of that pigment. And after that, after you've let it dry completely, the next step is to wash it in the washing machine on cold with a little bit of detergent just to make sure that everything that shouldn't be in there is out. We want to get rid of all the extra dye because you don't want this to bleed onto your skin or onto another item of clothing you might be wearing. This is assuming you're dyeing fabric or a, an item of clothing. But wow, is that ever a beautiful color. Oh, I love it. So there we go. Nice and rinse. Look at that beautiful color. Oh, I'm so excited to see that one once it's dry. So you can see these are three different things. All three are cotton. This one was bleach white. This one was bleach white. And this one was more of a tan white. And look at the difference in color. We've got like this dark berry beautiful. And this is more of a like a grayish purple, still beautiful, but totally a different color, even though these both were bleached out white to begin with. So I'm just gonna do one last squeeze, and now I'm gonna put these out on the towel, and once they are dry, I will show you what we've got. Okay guys, it's time for the big reveal. So, this is what we started with, unbleached cotton muslin, bleached white cotton yarn, and bleached white cotton tape. So, we're going to bring over the blackberry dye. Look at how beautiful it is. It's such a beautiful purple. Look at that color payoff with the yarn. So right now it looks a little bit, I almost want to say gray. Like it's not totally purple. It's like a mauvey purple. This, the fabric, the two cotton fabrics really picked up a lot of the purple hues. You can see, that looks nothing like what it used to look. And that's a beautiful color too. I would love that in like a linen breezy pair of pants. Wouldn't that be pretty? And linen would work too because it's a natural fiber so it'll hold it a lot, just like cotton. And there's that white bleached tape. Look at the difference. White all the way to this beautiful, it's almost like an eggplant. I wanna say it's like a blackberry purple but that would be, you know, kinda obvious because I used blackberries. And this is color fast. This has been through the washing machine and through the dryer and it's not had any problems. I will say on your first time putting it through the washing machine and dryer, do it with light colors because you may have a little bit of bleeding. For me, I just did it just uh, like these things in the wash uh, with some dark purple things so I knew it wouldn't be a problem. Same within the dryer, I would put it in light, with light colors. I wouldn't put something like this into the dryer with something white because you could have a tiny little bit of bleeding in the future. But that is the whole thing. I really hope that you give this a try because it is 
so much fun. It's something great you could do with your kids, you could do with your grandkids. If you're a teacher, this would be a great thing to do with your class. It's one of those things you could do um, over the course of a couple of days and it makes it a really fun adventure. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking for the next tutorial, I might be pulling out these crocheted little samplers and making something from them. Because I've done a, a total of eight videos with natural dyes now and I think that I could make like a little rainbow project with all of the colors I've made. So definitely let me know if you liked it. Tell me in the comments what you liked or didn't like. Let me know if you liked it by liking the video and definitely come back next week because I will let you know there is another dye video coming up next week. And I think the one that we're going to do next is going to be a pretty bright color. Um, and it's with something that you can find in the bottom of your fridge. So check back and comment if you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, come back and check. It'll be out next week. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>